Um, before we begin getting into the class, I just want to let you guys all know what my goal is with this class. My goal as a teacher is not only to provide you with a command over the Spanish language and to provide you with a confidence so that you can go out and speak Spanish with native speakers. But my plan or my goal for you all is to learn to appreciate not only Spanish but language as a whole. Learn to appreciate your own language, English, and how it relates to all other languages. Um, I'm hoping that after this class you can use Spanish not only in business, although with 600 million speakers um, it is very useful for business, but I hope that you can use Spanish somehow in your daily life whether that's through reading, literature, music, etc. I hope that somehow it serves you daily. Well, with that said, we can um, start the class. Uh, first, however, I would like to apologize in advance. As you all know, the uh, science laboratory had a bit of an accident. Um, and because of the fire today, class will be shorter. Uh, regardless, I hope that um, within this time I can give you at least um, a brief history of the Spanish language. Okay. Today we are just going to be going over materials, some background of Spanish. And I would, will be going over a few uh, vocab definitions. Okay. So let's start off by taking attendance. Okay. And 402 Spanish attendance sheet. Sorry. Um, are you here for you're not here for Spanish? Okay, um, right. Let me tell the rest of the class first. Um, a student just brought up the fact that originally this classroom was going to be used for uh, Mrs. Springbok for her class on rhetoric. Uh, however, because of a last minute shift, a change in schedule, um, uh, Miss uh, Springbok is actually going to be in room 102. So, is there anyone who is looking for uh, to take the rhetoric class uh, with Miss Springbok? You? You are? Um, two, three. Okay, well, you guys can go right now then. And um, uh, you're a bit late, but I think two minutes isn't too bad. Okay? Um, everyone else here is, everyone else is here for Spanish then? Okay. Um, attendance, do we have a Charlie? 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 Okay. Um, <clears throat> Nathan? 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 Do we have a... Daniel. Okay. Do we have a Frank? Frank. Okay. Do we have a Charlotte? Do we have a Charlotte? And Tim. Tim Baxter. And then Tim Robbins. Tim Robbins. Okay. Uh, just a few more. Do we have Sophia? Sophia with an F. Okay, 
Sophia with an F. And do we have Sophia with a PH? She's here as well. Uh, do we have a Sophia with a GH? GH. The English language. A lot of variety in spelling. And Sophia with a GH. Do we have Sophia with a ZYK and the number three? We do. Okay. Finally, is there a Bueller? I'm sorry. Bueller's not here today. Um, okay, well, it is the first day. So if you, do you know him personally? You do. Okay. Well, if you can um, just let him know that he has to be here for um, Wednesday at least, or I will be dropping him from the class. Okay? Thanks. of the way. Is there anyone here auditing the class? Taking it for the sheer pleasure of learning a foreign language? Well, with that out of the way, is there anyone here auditing the class? Taking it for the sheer pleasure of learning the language? You, you are? Okay, um, can I have your student ID? Okay. Sorry, can you hold, slow down a bit? Okay. Seven, two, oh. okay. And what's the last thing? Houston? Do we have any last minute um, enrollments? People who have enrolled within the last two weeks? You'd have? Okay. I'm going to need your student ID as well then. can also have your email, school email address. Sorry, did you say W? Okay, are you transferring from the um, Yolo district? You are, okay. Um, in that case, if you can actually talk to your counselor about uh, switching accounts over to a YOLO account, I can use this account momentarily. However, we will need to change that, okay? Okay, it's fine right now. Then. And your uh, last name. of the way, we can move on to our materials list for this class. So in this class we have both uh, recommended and required material. The first book that I strongly recommend is Dover Language Guides, Most Useful Spanish Words. I recommend this because it takes, it chooses Spanish words based on frequency, which means that the most popular Spanish words are going to come first, with the least popular going last in alphabetical order. Um, this is fair. This is really good because when you think about it, in any given language, you are never going to know, nor do you need to know, all of the words. 
it's really only a few thousand that are used on a regular basis. Keeping that in mind, if we only know about a thousand words, we can communicate on a daily basis. And this book provides that. Um, this book you cannot get in the school library because it's not part of the curriculum. However, you can get it on Amazon and in most uh, public libraries. Uh, the second book I want to, or not book, material that I want to recommend is Spanish Verbs. Uh, this is by REA. And this sheet lists all the necessary Spanish wor uh, verbs. And uh, when I say Spanish verbs, I mean common verbs that you are going to need to know for this class. It also lists all the ways in which you can conjugate these verbs depending on situation. Um, the obvious ones are past, future, present, but it gets more complicated with conditional and uh, subjective conjugation. Okay. This, of course, is only a reference guide and uh, it cannot be used in tests. However, I do allow a one sheet of your own notes separate from that. Okay? As for required materials, I As for required materials, I do require that you own one of these, Literatura Moderna, um, of Literatura Moderna Hispanica. And that's because this book, firstly, it was written originally in Spanish and it preserves a lot of the colonial idioms and phrases that you may come across. Secondly, the book contains a lot of short stories, which are great because it's easier to practice if the story is um, less arcane or complex. This book can be found in the student library. Um, however, a lot of people take notes on it, so there might be some scuff marks, etc. Uh, the second book that I require is uh, El Principito. As you know, this was originally written in French, but because French is so similar to uh, Spanish, the translation is very accurate. Uh, this is going to be the first book that we read, and as I hope you all know, it was originally, it's, it's uh, actually a children's book, and I'm hoping you all had to the chance to read it when you were young, because it really is uh, a fantastic children's book. Okay? The second or third book that we are going to read in this class is um, V.C. Andrews, no, uh, V.C. Andrews, Flores and El Atico. Uh, while this book was originally written in English, it was written at a fifth or sixth grade reading level. So the translation is very easy, and the Spanish version preserves the simplistic grammar. 
the reason I chose this book uh, is because it helps to have an English version side by side sometimes so that you can compare as you go along. Uh, so I do recommend that you also purchase the English vers version of Flores en el Atico, Flowers in the Attic, but it is not necessary, okay? And uh, finally, the last book that we are going to be reading is... Stefano Dudas, No Apagues La Luz. This book is fantastic. Um, it is a contemporary piece. Uh, while I do love old world literature, this is a contemporary piece. And the reason I strongly recommend um, reading Stefano Tura in general is because he has a very unique uh, style in the way in which he writes. Uh, his books are only written in Spanish, French, and Italian, so you are not going to be able to find this in English. One of the reasons I love Stefano Tura because he doesn't release any of his books in English. He only releases books in French, Italian, and Spanish because he insists that he, that he translates all of his works before publishing. And since he only speaks those languages and not English, he never publishes in English. Um, I admire his artistic integrity, and that's why I recommend reading his books in general, which after this class you will be able to do, okay? That's it for materials. You can find all of this in the student library or you can order them from the school's bookstore. So, with uh, the materials all out of the way, we can move on to some uh, technical terms before we leave today, okay? I want to start off with a term uh, that you guys are going to learn to love, okay? This word is cognate, okay? A cognate is a word that is very similarly spelled in one language, is very similarly spelled in two languages, okay? This, uh, this okay. so now that we have the materials list out of the way uh, by the way you guys can all get that list on your uh, student accounts but now that we have that out of the way we can move on to some uh, technical terms firstly there's a term that you guys are all going to learn to love Cognates. Now, a cognate is a word that is spelled in one language in a specific way and is spelled in another language in a very similar way and they have the same meaning. Okay? Now, the reason you guys are going to love this is because in Spanish we have many cognates that come over into English. Okay, 
approx approximately 50% of, com of common Spanish vocabulary. And I say common because obviously no one speaks using the entire vocabulary. But approximately 50% of common Spanish vocabulary is similar, if not the same, to English vocabulary. Okay. Now let me give you a brief history so you understand why. In 1066, the Normans, okay, in 1066, the Normans, who occupied what is now Normandy, invaded England in what is now known as the uh, Norman Conquest, okay. The Normans spoke French. It's not French that is spoken now, but it is French nonetheless. And when the Normans invaded England, or what is now England, because back then it was not England, when they invaded modern day England, they brought with them their language. And they instilled this language, French, into the nation's um, government, into the nation's business it became the language of commerce and it was spoken by the upper class now while french was only spoken by a few at first the lower classes began to learn french as well so that they could communicate with the upper class to sell to them and to serve them there is a period in which modern-day England for a while was bilingual they spoke French they spoke English now what eventually happened was through speaking these languages interchangeably the lower class began to instead of going back and forth they began to just speak English using English grammar but they began to import French vocabulary. So now we have a language that is uh, Germanic at birth, German, gra not German grammar, but Germanic grammar, using a vocabulary that's largely based in French. Of course, we still have French today, so that didn't change, but English, after the Norman Conquest, was completely, not completely, but virtually unrecognizable from English before the Norman Conquest. But the vocabulaire anglais, the English vocabulary, is essentially French in, voc uh, in vocabulary. It's, you know, structurally and grammatically, it's not French, but it's vocabulary. Is French French with different pronunciation okay that being said because it's so similar to French and French is a romance language by default it is closely related to Spanish we can say a distant cousin bearing this in mind if we know some of the bridges between Spanish and English in terms of vocabulary, we immediately have access to several thousand words, okay? And this gives us a huge basis in learning Spanish. So, let me go over some of the easy uh, cognates, remember that term that I was mentioning. So, uh, one of the easy ones is we will be getting better materials in this classroom soon, 
so bear with me. But some of the common cognates include words that end in... I'm just going to do this. Some of the easy cognates in Spanish include words that end in T-I-O-N, such as uh, nation, uh, um, nation, uh, reservation. These words are essentially the same in Spanish except for pronunciation, and that C right there. Nation becomes nación. Delegation becomes delegación, okay? And we will go over pronunciation more later, okay? Another common cognate pattern that we find Um, I should let you all know that I do not appreciate phones in this classroom and I hear someone's phone so if you can turn that off because it is very distracting for the class okay thank you so another common um, cognate would be words that end in AL Words that end in AL are the same. For example, the word normal Another common cognate are words that end in AL. For example, normal. That translates to normal. Animal becomes animal. These words don't change in spelling or accent marks. They only change in pronunciation. Okay? Um, <clears throat> I don't have time right now to go through every single pattern when it comes to cognates, um, only because we only have a few minutes left in class. Uh, that being said, I can tell you some other ones very quickly. Uh, words that end in O-R are often the same. Actor becomes actor. Doctor becomes doctor. Uh, words that end in IST are often the same. Uh, dentist, dentista. Okay. Um, oftentimes, words that end in ENT or ANT are the same as well. Uh, different becomes diferente. Diferente. As a final one, there are more, but as a final one, words that end in um, I-T-Y are the same in English. Uh, felicity. Felicity. Does anyone know what that means? Anyone? Felicity means happiness or state of happiness. While it's not a common word in English, it does translate to felicidad in Spanish, which is instead of an a ty at the end, you have a dad. Felicity, English. Felicidad, Spanish. That brings me to another point about Spanish. 
by learning Spanish, you gain a higher and more profound understanding of English. Not only were your, will your command of the English language in grammar evolve, but you will also gain a sense of control and vocabulary. Uh, the fact of the matter is that through learning a second language, especially a Romance language, you uh, broaden your horizon when it comes to vocabulary. For example, though not only do we have the example of the word Felicity, but we may have a word such as um, Cacophony. Cacophonia is a very common word in Spanish, and it's, uh, it's when there's a lot of noise around, etc. It's not used quite as often in English, but you now have an English word that you know. So by understanding that a lot of words are cognates, when you learn a Spanish word, you will learn an English word as well. Okay? Uh, moving on, we also have, as another grammatical term, noun. Now, I know you're thinking, oh, how elementary. We're going over what a noun is. But let's go over what a noun is. Most people think of a noun as a person, place, or thing. However, this can be confusing because... Well, let me ask you this. Is this a noun? Pen. Is pen a noun? It is, right? You're all shaking your head that yes, okay. Let me ask this, then. Is word a noun? Is word a noun? You all seem a little bit confused. If I say word, did I... S the word that I said, is that a noun? Okay, still confused. Um, thought. Is thought a noun? Some of you say yes, some of you say no. You see, the problem with our uh, common term for a noun, a person, place, or thing, is that it inherently does not allow for words that are more complex than a person, a place, or thing. Because a thought is not a person, it's not a place, and when it and concerning a thing, regarding a thing, it's it's um that's where it becomes somewhat shady. No one the problem with this is that when we think of a thing, we think of a physical thing. So when I bring up a word like thought, no one knows if that's a noun because they don't see a thought, they don't touch a thought. But a thought is a noun. So our new definition for a noun is any word in which you can place the before it. If the can come before the noun, then it's a word, then it's a noun, okay? If the can come before the word, then it's a noun. The ball, the cat, the dog, the thought, the word, the feeling, the emotion, the love. Those are all nouns because the, the article, the, can come before it. We also need to quickly go over, yes, we still have some time. We also quickly need to go over the uh, definition of a verb. A verb, a word that gives action. This is also confusing for many people. Can people give me some verbs to throw? Okay, good. Um, excuse my handwriting. Throw. 
Anyone else to run? Okay. What else? To kiss? All right. What do all of these words have in action in common? Right, they are all, as you said, action words, and they all involve, what did you say exactly? Movement. Okay. And that's a problem with our definition for a verb. Most people assume that a verb has to involve movement, but it doesn't. Be. Is that a verb? To be. Some say yes, some say no. Because of to be doesn't involve movement, but it is a verb. To exist is a verb. So, to ambulate. In Spanish, that verb is ambular. Ambulad. Now, just as, as I was saying that in English, we any verb has to have to before it, to amble. Every Spanish word has to have a to before it as well. But in Spanish, that, too, is expressed through the ending. Okay? Now, this is where people have some difficulty. In English, we conjugate. We change the infinitive, which is the entire word, to suit a specific location, time, or uh, situation. So, to amble is the infinitive. He ambles, he, she, or it ambles, is ambles with an S, okay? So when an infinitive changes, it becomes conjugated. We do this in English, but it is much more common in Spanish and any Romance language. To amble is the infinitive. Amble, ambles is the conjugate, the, not the conjugate, the conjugated version, the conjugation. And ambulad is the infinitive, and obviously it has its own conjugations, which we will go into in more detail in our next class. But uh, we only have about five minutes left, so to quickly summarize what we've covered today, I hope that you now have a sense that you can learn Spanish with more ease. I hope that you leave this classroom relaxed in knowing that you already know Spanish in a sense. Because of conjugates, you have several thousand words at your arsenal when communicating with native speakers. You now know that Approximately 50% of the vocabulary in English is the vocabulary in Spanish, at least the common vocabulary. So really, you only need to know or learn about a thousand words before you're fully comfortable communicating in great detail. Until that time, though, I hope that this class will prepare you step by step in achieving your goals and I hope you gain a uh, 
a thirst for knowledge, not just knowledge regarding Spanish, but knowledge regarding language and linguistics in general. Language is how we communicate. Just as we shape language, language shapes us. We are who we are because of our language, because of the language we were taught, and we can change ourselves by changing not only the language that we are speaking in, because we do change when we speak in a different language, but by changing perhaps the vocabulary, the pronunciation of specific words or simply word choice in our daily lives, we can change ourselves through language. So, bearing this in mind, I hope you uh, enjoyed this short uh, class. We will go. We will uh, dive into Spanish fully in our next class. And until then, have a great day. I'll see you next time. Goodbye, class.